In this video, we're gonna be looking at launching a beam calculation using Revit area loads on a floor, a structural floor that's been placed in the Revit model. And this particular demonstration is gonna use a steel beam, but the same workflow applies to other types of beams as well. So in previous videos, we've looked at ways of doing beam calculation launches using linear loads, point loads, uh, so on and so forth, hosted, non-hosted, and we're gonna be looking specifically at area loads in this uh, in this video. So uh, we're gonna to go to the second floor plan, and I wanna specifically note that the only types of loads you can use on a floor with intercalc for Revit are going to be hosted area loads, and so those are gonna be loads that take up the full extents of the slab, and they're hosted to the underlying analytical element that belongs to the slab. So you'll want to go to your visibility graphics settings and make sure analytical is enabled and also make sure that for the particular floor you're working with that the analytical option has been activated. If it's not activated, then you're not going to be able to create these loads. So if you notice, if I check that off, you can't see the analytical element, but I'm gonna check that on so we can place some loads. And the hosted area loads are placed similar to what we've seen in our previous videos. If I go to the Analyze tab, I go to Loads, Hosted Area Load, then I have the opportunity to set my magnitudes and I'm just gonna use a 30 PSF dead load and then toggle to Live Load and we'll do a regular occupancy 80 PSF. Uh, so now that these loads are on here, Intercalc for Revit will be able to automatically detect these loads when we launch a calculation for any one of these beams that fall in this floor area. So for this first demonstration, I'm just going to pick a beam that has no special conditions. It's a typical interior beam in the middle of the floor, just so we can look at what Intercalc for Revit is able to do in terms of detection and interpretation of these geometry conditions. So before we do that, I want to talk about basically how the system works. And in order to take an area load and convert it into linear load objects that the intercalc interface can understand, that's done by a process of walking along the length of the beam and sampling the tributary width or tributary geometry of the beam. The preference settings for that sampling are here under the preferences, active model preferences, tributary geometry sampling density, and you can choose either for beam design or for girder point loads what the sampling density is going to be for that beam. In this case, it's set to choose on launch, but you can also override to sample the tributary width mid-span only, mid-span plus the end regions, or you could even uh, override to choose a complete contour, in which case it's going to dynamically densify anywhere that discontinuities are found. I'm going to leave this set to choose on launch so that I can specify that when we trigger the calculation to begin. So if I come up here and I click my steel beam and pick this beam right here, uh, first I approve the support conditions. There's no tributary beams, so I'm going to bypass that. And then since we had set that preference to choose on launch, we're going to see a tab here that prompts me to choose what density I want to sample the tributary geometry. And in this case, since there's no irregularities in the floor, we could choose virtually any density to sample the tributary width, and it's going to come up with the same loading diagram. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and sample a complete contour, and we'll skip live load reduction. So there's a brief intervening period there where uh, you see it uh, sampling the geometry. It's a very fast process, and then it'll go ahead and launch the calculation in the intercalc interface. And when that calculation loads, we're going to see that even though we hadn't manually applied any linear load objects to this beam, we have loads in our loading diagram. And if we go to the loads all spans tab, we'll see that the area load magnitudes have been automatically detected from the floor. We have our 30 dead and our 80 live. And the tributary width of seven feet has been automatically detected. And of course, you can always verify that by visiting your framing plan and simply taking a dimension string and we can see that that's been calculated accurately. And like we always do, we can review our bending stress, unity checks, 
and we're not seeing any information here in the span loads tab, but we will look at in a future video how we can superimpose different types of loads in addition to or as a replacement for these loads that were detected from the area force effects on the slab.